Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Hey, Jess. Hi, Susanna. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, so since this is our first podcast, I thought that maybe we would uh, begin by telling the listeners a little bit about where we come from and how we got started in this industry. Yes, great idea. I got my start about 12 years ago in production. Mm -hmm. I started as a production assistant on a kids TV show. Uh, at apartment 11. If you're from Montreal, you probably have heard about yep. them before <laughs> and working on mystery hunters. So I was a PA. I, I helped coordinate, you know, the shoots for the crew. We had a studio in Montreal too, where a bunch of, uh, episodes were filmed. So I worked on that, but that was just a summer job. And then I went off after that to, uh, production coordinating. And that was at CMJ, which was out in St. Lambert. And I worked on the show, The Will. And this was while I was finishing up university. I, uh, I was a coordinator doing also the doc side. So coordinating the, with the participants, the crew, all the travel, things of that nature. And then once the reenactment started, I started doing casting. And it was a new sort of show for this company. It was definitely a new show and new experience for me. So I pretty much learned as I went and, uh, it was non-union at the time. So I did, uh, Craigslist. I used Craigslist. I wow. went to shopping malls, churches, um, Facebook. I went to MSOPA with Joza and looked through her binders with all of her, uh, students. So really outside of the box, I guess, <laughs> uh, casting, but it was a success. The shows turned out great. So that was good. Um, after that contract, cause it was all contract. I went, uh, back to coordinating on some other shows. I was a producer's assistant too. Um, and then CMJ, when they sold another show called fatal vows, I went back to them and just focused on casting because doing both was way too much. It was like a three person job. So right. I stuck with the casting route because there was something that I really loved about it. And yeah, Fatal Vows went on to do seven seasons, which was amazing. CMJ also had many other shows like Stranger in My Home, Imposters. Um, I was able to cast, I pretty much did all of their in-house stuff. So narrators, uh, experts, hosts, everything, and sort of got a nice range of um, experience. And then I really just wanted to stick to casting for TV and movies. So I decided to go off on my own and start Greenberg Casting. And this was about six years ago. And I'm since then have been able to work with different producers, directors, different sorts of projects, and um, most recently teaming up with Rosina from Elite Casting, who has been doing this for so long. So I'm learning so much from her and gaining more experience and uh, meeting more people. So in a nutshell, that is sort of my Journey into casting Journey from into production casting. into, um, yeah, into yeah. casting. So did you always want to like, so I, I guess this is a silly question. Did you always want to be a casting director or did you think of it when you were young? Like, so was this a journey that just found you? Was this a career that just found you or was it something that you pursued? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to say I knew it all along, but I, you know, I knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I truthfully didn't know what jobs existed in entertainment. I just knew always growing up, I loved like stage performances. I loved TV, movies, actors, like, you know, but I didn't think casting was a job. I had no idea. Um, so I think by fluke, this one production coordinating job had casting. So I was able to 
try it out and right the rest is history as the they rest say. is history yeah wow that's great yeah and cool. um how about you how did well yeah i went pretty much, I think it would be the standard route of always wanting to be an actor from when I was young. So that was just something that I wanted since I was four. Um, and then I would, do, my parents put me in children's theater and then I did high school plays, uh, you know, uh, Montreal West Children's Shakespeare. Then I went to do university in theater. And then I thought, uh, uh, I would graduate university, I would get an agent, and then I would land a series, and then that would be it. I would be, mm -hmm. you know, off into to Hollywood, and we're done, like, you know, fait accompli. But that was not what my journey uh, happened. But that's not what happened. I graduated university, I did manage to get an agent, but I did not get any work. And uh, it was it was sort of, uh, I don't want to say surprising, but I, it was, it, I was shocked at how hard it was and I did end up getting a job as a receptionist in a casting agency at Elite Casting so I too have known Rosina and that was like uh, almost 30 27 years ago so I was <laughs> the receptionist there for two years and I learned a lot I learned a lot about behind the scenes I also unfortunately learned about just how competitive it is and how many super talented actors there are out there and unfortunately, not all of us are working on a regular basis, but it was, uh, it was an eye-opening experience for me. And then I, I really pursued acting for 10 years and uh, I had done theater and uh, all sorts of stuff. And then uh, I had, I went to Toronto, I came back. I, I mean, I was really trying. And then after 10 years, I absolutely, um, I had a, an audition for the series and that was something that I really wanted and was hoping to get. And I had three callbacks for it and I had meditated. I just finished the Tony Robbins CDs. I mean, I felt that I did everything. I put my 1000% and I did not get it. And I was really um, stopped in my tracks, very, very disappointed and really wanting to quit the business. Um, but in the meantime, I had a, a very good friend of mine, Robin Baruchel, was starting to help a friend of hers who was starting an agency for kids. And she asked me if I would be willing to give an audition workshop for these young performers. They were mostly teens. And I did. And I loved it. And I was surprised that I loved it. And from then, some of the parents started calling me to coach their kids for auditions. And then so I started private coaching. And then uh, fast forward three years later, Robin and I uh, decided to start a, an acting school together where she did the business of acting and I did the creative part. And so we ran that together since Robin has retired and I no longer coach kids. I'm exclusively an adult acting coach, but the school continues and I still give in classes and I still love it. And acting has, I have to say in the past 10 years for me, really uh, taken a back seat just because there's been less work for me, but I'm very grateful that I found the journey of teaching also uh, because it's also a passion for me. And I find that when the students get gigs, I get that same rush and same high as if I were to get them. So, so, so it all worked out. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And I know that you do have a lot of students that have gone on to achieve a lot of success. Yes, which is exciting. And I'm, I'm super happy about that. I have a few students who are on series in Toronto and I have one who's on a series in LA and um, yeah. And, and so that's, 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 uh, I'm very excited for them and it's, it's yeah. and it feels good. It feels like I'm, I'm doing, I'm on the right path. You know, I have purpose. So I really enjoyed that. Um, for sure. And, and speaking, I did want to talk since I have stayed in Montreal and I wanted to talk to you specifically about the Toronto experience, because I just had this conversation yesterday in class about how staying in Montreal for even smaller parts, it feels like a lot of these roles are going to cast outside of in Toronto. And I wanted to know if you had any um, feedback on that and you who do, sees all these self tapes. Um, how do you feel about um, 
that comment that all, all mo a lot of the parts are going out to Toronto actors, even for Montreal, well, for Montreal productions. Yeah. Um, well, I could only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could empathize that that's how actors are feeling. For sure. Um, but I could only speak for myself and I know like it has nothing to do with the Montreal versus Toronto. I There's know. no, yeah. it's just I know Montreal versus Toronto. That's something that we talk about a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I know yes. it's the wrong word to use because we're not in competition with Toronto. So that's, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, yes, it might feel that way. And if that like lights a fire under your ass, like, <laughs> you know, use it, but if it's going to discourage you and make you not do your best, then just stay away from that narrative. I do think we have to change like our mindset about it. You know, if I look at two self tapes and I don't know the actors, I won't know if they're from Montreal, Toronto per se, there's nothing, there's not one thing that people from Toronto do that Montreal can't or there's no giveaways uh, there's a few things that are just reality that a in Montreal we just don't have the volume of people you know there's a lot of actors in Toronto versus Montreal that is just fact <laughs> that we just don't have as many but the ratio you know I get it's all relative. Um, yeah. There's also more productions in Toronto. So there's more opportunity for them to build the resume with, you know, a lot more studio shows and films. There's just more happening there that they need volume that they're booking up, you know, in Montreal, there's less, we do have some and the past couple of years actually have been great with a few nice series here, but I, I don't think like, I feel that we do have great talent here. We just have less. We don't have yeah. as many. Just as many. Well, I'm happy you said that. And that was one of the things that I did want to talk about here is I remember Eleanor Noble had said, Eleanor Noble, who's the president of ACTRA, she had said, I would like Montreal, because we are a small English community, to be seen as a boutique talent agency right that we're small we're a smaller pool but we we do have the ability and the talent to do great work and so yeah. we have definitely have less productions here so uh, maybe less opportunities to book but in the same breath i know i had a student say like how come Toronto actors are allowed to get, you know, small actor roles in Montreal? That doesn't seem fair. Um, wh why? And I was like, look, most productions that are in Quebec have something called a tax credit. So it means that they have to book a certain amount of Quebec talent who pay taxes here. Um, but if they want to forego that tax credit, which means a little bit of money for, for casting here, that's their prerogative, you know, they can cast who they want. And in the same breath, we are allowed to audition for uh, productions in Toronto or Vancouver. ACTRA, which is our union, is a national union. So it's here to protect across the country, not just Montrealers. So yeah. that is something that I did say. And I do say we are capable, we are talented. And I know that it sometimes feels impossible because with this, the self tape world right now, that's another thing we'll talk about it. There's so many more people going out for roles, but mm -hmm. it can work in our benefit too, because we're, we too are allowed to self tape across the country. So there's no need for a defeatist attitude. Yeah. So I just think that's something that we have to remember. Um, and we have to keep just working on our craft doing what we can, what we can control and bringing our best foot forward. Exactly. Especially with self tapes, you know, it has opened up the opportunity to audition across, you know, across Canada, but then other things come into play as well. Like, you know, who is your agent, who is casting? If, if they're familiar with Toronto talent, then you know, in Toronto, that's probably where they're going to start their search. 
right? Because that's always producers. Okay, let's let's just start locally. Let's start locally. Okay, you haven't found what you wanted. Okay, we'll widen the search a bit and widen and widen and widen until you know the integrity of the 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 project and what the director envisions that does come first, and then you have all the other realities like budget, schedule, tax credits, all those things that start to come into play. So you have to go in with that mindset of like, I'm not going up against Toronto and Vancouver. No, I'm going up against myself. I'm coming in, I'm bringing myself. This is what I got. They like me. Great. They don't. That's great too. And you move on. And, and um, that's really how I feel like we have to change the mindset and hopefully you know, it it could be the mindset of some directors and producers too, that they perhaps feel, oh, there's so many actors in Toronto. Maybe they're better. Maybe they're more experienced. So it could be on them also. I can't speak for them. I can only speak from my own uh, experience, but uh, I, I'm proud of our talent here. I think we have amazing talent here and, and I'd like to champion for them. And, you know, if, if it works, it works. And yeah. I wish there was more. I wish we had more people here and more productions here. All yeah. of it. But we're just, we are just smaller and that's okay. And that's okay too. Exactly. So what do you think of the, the, I don't want to say argument, but people have said that it's like, you have to move to Toronto or you have to move to LA. LA was a big one too, but you have to move to Toronto. You have to move to LA in order to get work in Montreal because they respect people with agents in like Toronto or or LA more than if you're local. Do you think it makes a difference? I don't. I think you know, I can't fight that it's happened. I know it's happened. And whether that be like, oh, they moved out to Toronto to pursue their career in acting. Okay. Like it's marketing too, at a certain point, you know, it's, it's like, okay, they're taking acting seriously. They want to go to the next level, you know? So they're going out to Toronto because then LA might look in Toronto for people. They're maybe they're not looking in Montreal, you know? So it could be mindset also in law of attraction. Okay. My intention is going to Toronto to work more. And then all of a sudden you're getting more work. If that brings you back to Montreal or in Toronto, you know, that that's what it is. So, but I, I I don't think that that's the only way to get work is to like move out of province to then start booking at your home. I don't think that's the way I just, I think that's literally like law of attraction and being like very certain of your intentions. Right. Yeah. I, I I don't think it's the only way either. I, well, maybe I don't want to think it's the only way. I still want to believe that it's the the work is the most important thing, showing yeah. up with the goods, doing your best, having a great self tape that will get you seen more than if you move out to, uh, you know, another province or get a, a more reputable agent. Although that is a whole other topic mm-hmm. about does having like a, you know, a, a better agent who has a bigger roster, more, more, uh, you know, celebrity clients, or does that make a difference in terms of for what casting directors see, like you talked about marketing and stuff, does having a big agent make a difference? Um, I think at a certain point for certain roles, yes. Why do you think that um, is? It's an extra level of like validation and trust. It's like, okay, they they know talent, they're building their roster. They represent X, Y, Z. Like this person must be credible or talented and not, you know, so you're just, Oh, I hate that. I get it. And I, I understand it, I guess, because I come from such an artist perspective and I never like with the students, I'm like, you do what you can do. Work on your self tape. If you kick butt, you know, do like Steve Martin has said, be so good. They can't ignore you. But then there's the but other. But that's still act- true. Yeah, that's still that true. That's still but- true. You know, because not every actor is right for every role. So just because they're great at this one thing or just because they're in the presence of a super talented person, they're on the same roster, like you still have to be great. You know, at a certain point, you're like, you're not fooling anyone anymore. (laughs) It is true, though, because I remember when I was a receptionist at Elite, I remember when there was a a new student who just graduated from National Theater School, which had like the best reputation. Everybody's like, 
oh, let's watch them, you know, like, let's go watch their tape. Like, they're, oh, we, there's, there, you know, we have the, the National Theater School kids are coming to audition for, everybody had huge expectations for them. And same with, if there was a, an agent, oh, they're represented by this agency, they got a new client, we have to go look like everybody's enthusiastic. Now, in the same breath, if they did a crappy audition, it's like, oh, oh my goodness, you know, like yeah. it's, it's actually a lot of pressure because, because if they don't do good work, it's quite a shock. You noticed it, Sid. but you do. And I think maybe, especially in the self tape world, you take more um, time to really watch. And there's an excitement about people who are with like the bigger agents. So I, I don't like it. I'm against it. I'm fully about like, do your work, but in the end of the day, you still have to do your work. You have yeah. to be, do your best. You have to show up and be, so be good, you know, and whether they really are excited to see it, it's just like you said, validation. They really have high expectations. You do a great job. They're like, yes, confirmed. Everybody's, everybody's happy. Yeah. Um, and again, know. it's not to say that you can't have success with an agent who is maybe less known or doesn't have the biggest roster. You know, all the agents build their rosters differently. Some have feet in Montreal and Toronto. Some just have, you know, feet here. And you really have to have a good chemistry and relationship with your agent and be aligned and on the same page with where you're going. That, you know, that's the first priority. And, you know, and then you work from there. Absolutely. So uh, in terms of, so the Toronto, Montreal, is there any advice that you would give to like the Montreal actor who has felt that they're doing self-tapes after self-tapes after self-tapes, and they feel that even smaller roles are having, seem to be going to um, non-local talent. And they, is there something that you would tell them? Yeah, I think that, um, well, I'll say it again. We can't, we have to change our mindset of, <laughs> yeah. Like we are just as good as Toronto and just stop the victimization of it. Like, you know, don't go into it with a defeatist attitude. Like yeah. go in and show us what you got literally with pride. Yeah. With pride and get excited and, and get into it, do research, work with the script. If you have questions, ask them whatever, whatever it is, do it and do it with pride and, and enthusiasm. And if there's something that like you're not connecting to, you can also pass it up and you don't have to do every single audition that comes your way. If you're not connecting to it, you're better off giving that extra time on, on a role that you really like than, you know, just banging out a ton of self tapes that you're not putting your effort into. Yeah, I, that was, I, I, that was something we had discussed before. And I remember you said like, you can say no. And especially in the world of self tapes, like oh before God. you were, you know, you booked a day and if there was a director in and then people to say no, it was probably more frustrating. But now, since you have such a volume of self tapes, it's not, I don't want to say a big deal to pass, but um, you're better off quality over quantity. And I think if we're trying to create and myself included in this, cause I'm still out there auditioning, do good work and, um, yeah, be, be, be that boutique agency feeling that we have quality. We make interesting choices. We're courageous. And when the, the audition comes, I say, try to have that attitude of curiosity and play not which sometimes I get like oh my god I'm so busy and audition I can't self tape mm -hmm. now but I'm like if that's the case then maybe then say no mm -hmm. or come in and say okay I'm going to explore another character this will be interesting let's see what I can do with this yeah exactly. because I because I do think it uh I do think it makes a big difference for sure so as an actor, do you have any tips, mindset tricks to keep you like in a good, positive headspace with in a, in a good, hot, positive, uh, headspace? Yeah, I, I think I, well, one thing that I did want to talk about the audition process, which I started doing, uh, I, I, it, I've done it before, but I'm doing it even for self tapes now. And I just, I have like an audition questionnaire that I've 
given to myself. And it's basically the time, uh, the audition, the project, uh, and then the questions, uh, did I like, did I do my best? Did I know my lines? Did I listen? Um, did I uh, do my ritual before the audition, which sometimes is a superhero pose, take a breath before I start the audition. And it, and it's just sort of a check-in to see that I've did, did I, it used to be, was I on time? Now it's, did I, you know, put it in on time? Did I, did I upload it on time? So it used to be, it really is a way for me to track my improvement, something that I can control. It also helps me close the book on the audition. So I'm no longer in a position of like, oh, did I get it? Did they see it? Do they like it? It's like, did I do everything that I could do within my power to put my best foot forward? Um, you know, when I got the sides, did I have an attitude of curiosity and play? So there's all these questions that I have. And that really helped. I used to do what, and I know few of my students do this also used to write down all their auditions and then see what their booking ratio is. So they'd be like, I'm like booking one in four auditions now, or I'm booking one in 10 auditions now. And that's, that's, I'm going to say fine, but it's not, it's horrible. I think it's the worst idea. I used to do it too. And I used to get excited because I would, I was booking a lot in my thirties, but then I stopped booking in my forties and I was like, so miserable. And then I was like, okay, so I'm not booking one in four anymore, but I'm booking one in 10. So then the 10th audition would happen. And then I'm like, how come I didn't book it? I'm supposed to book it. I was due. I'm due. I'm due. And it was like, it's like this whole thing that I could not control yeah. and it was making me neurotic. I mean, more neurotic than I already am <laughs> So it was adding to my neuroses. And, uh, and it's just, it, it was just pointless. I'm like, how is this serving me? This is so me needing to control outcome and having zero control of outcome. And I can't choose who's going to pick me. Like, I just don't get to make those decisions. I can do my best audition. I can hand things in on time. I can show up with my talent and my own unique fingerprint and my own voice. I can do that, but I can't choose who's going to choose me. And one thing that I, 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 I'm still, I'm so much better than I was when I was younger, not taking it personally. And I think it's so important in the world of self tapes, because where before, you know, there was like, I don't know, 10, 12, maybe, you know, people going out for the role. Now you've got like, you know, 112 people going out for the role. So the, the whole thing has changed so much, like the volume of people auditioning for these you know, pretty smallish parts. I mean, I'm not leads. I'm saying just, you know, small principles and stuff like that. And so you have such a huge volume of people going out for it and, and just, you just can't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. It really is. Your job is to uh, bring the character off the page with your own unique voice and fingerprint Pre pre present it through your self tape to the production. And if it doesn't fit their view, then it doesn't fit their, their image of what they, they, they wanted. And it's just nothing to do with you. You know, yeah. it's just nothing to do with you. So, so I think that's really important to, to sort of practice that more and more of letting it go. And that questionnaire has helped me letting it go. It happens Still, I mean, still at this age, once in a blue moon, there's a part that I'll audition for that I think I nailed the audition and then I didn't get, and then I don't hear back. And I'm, I'm like, oh, that sucks. It doesn't stay with me forever. It yeah. stays with me for like, you know, a couple of days. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, move on. It stays yeah. with me until I know the thing is cast really, right. you know, if once it's cast, I'm like, okay, I'm done and it's over. But there's a little bit of like checking my phone. And I hate that feeling. I used to do it with guys and then <laughs> doing it with auditions. And I was like, I just can't stand checking my phone to see, do they like me? Do they want me? You know, yeah. I think it's, I, I do, I am able to do a lot more self-reflection on that, on the, it, like, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's, it, how is this serving me? How is this adding value to my life? It's not. And my life is my day. So yeah. yeah. So to, to answer your question, yes, that's what I do in terms of auditions and, and my own mindset. I journal every day. I meditate to help me sleep at night. I do a gratitude journal. And when I'm feeling like blue, low energy, I do try to say, okay, 
self-care something you know self-care and and usually it's like right maybe lie down take a day off so i do think that uh actors artists everybody in this pre high pressure world needs to to put uh you know make sure self-care is part of their routine for sure because i mean like auditioning is one of probably the biggest parts of being an actor is auditioning and training. So it's almost like you have to fall in love with auditioning and being proud of every audition you do do because it's literally part of it. And you're only up against yourself. You can't view it yeah. as you're up against everyone else auditioning. Cause like you said, the, they are casting a wider net now that yeah. things are not done in person anymore. So yeah. And you, do you have any mindset rituals to keep your, cause you're also, you know, you're, you're an entrepreneur, self-employed, you're not acting, but you're, you're, you know, putting I yourself could out relate. there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could relate on so many levels and yeah. One of the things I do is a gratitude journal like you. So in my notes app on my phone every night or in the morning, I write down like, usually at night, what was great about the day to like the, the tiniest things, you know, like, oh, I had a fun conversation with a friend or I was able to go for a walk or I found a great parking spot, like literally showing gratitude for the smallest things that really are the big things, you know, um, they make your day easier. They make your day better. And so I find that really important and helpful just to view everything more positively and I also love listening to podcasts, audiobooks, TikToks. I find them yep. <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> uh, well, just funny. I like comedy and humor and I like to laugh. And I just think that puts me in a, also a better headspace. And one of the, well, actually a crazy story about like mindset, gratitude journaling, even like goal setting is I used to work uh, at Lululemon back in CJEP university time. And they're, they're very big on their employees development. There's the Lulu library and goal setting. And I don't know how often we did it probably about twice a year, maybe every three months, all the staff would get together and we would write out our goals, professional health, um, or personal health and career goals, one wow. year, five year, 10 year. And I was recently going through my papers and I came across one of my worksheets that I did at Lululemon. And this is going back like probably 15 years ago. And at my 10 year career goal, I had put own my own agency. That crazy. And I don't even really remember. And you, did you know what agency, like what, like, did no. you have an idea? You knew it was entertainment industry because you said you wanted to per be in the entertainment industry, yeah. but you didn't. Exactly. So yeah, I didn't really know, like I said before, like I didn't really know what that entailed, but it was just something that like, okay, yeah, like That's let's cool. try it out, you know? And so all to say is it could be literally as easy as like writing it down, closing a book and throwing it away. And it's in your subconscious, you know? Yeah. And you don't even know what's like working for you. Uh, cause it's so deep and ingrained in there. So it, I found that really, really interesting. It is um, interesting. It's so cool. Wow. Yeah. And then there's this other um, book that I highly recommend. You've read it too, Atomic Habits by James Love Clear. Uh, yeah. Like Amazing. I find when I was reading it, like things were like clicking and I was like, yeah. But then like, as you like, again, it's subconsciously going in when you're listening to the audio book and he also releases um weekly newsletters mm -hmm. and again like you know just like the nuggets of like amazing information that seem to be so like pertinent to what you're going through that week I don't know uh, yeah he really does it you're absolutely right he does seem to hit exactly where you are but it's interesting how yeah yeah so one of the quotes that he sent out recently I saved because I was like oh my god this is like so good for, I think everyone, but also specifically actors. Um, so I wanted to read it and share yes, it. Yes, please. So he writes, being pleasant and having a good attitude is a simple way to become luckier. Opportunities come through people and people are more likely to bring opportunities to people they like. 
It's hard to win if your attitude adds friction to every interpersonal experience. So I just thought that was so good. And like, you know, obviously this is harder to do through self tapes, but just to remember that like who you meet, like you're always networking, you know, when you go to class, when you yes. are in plays or different shows, like, first of all, you could achieve success by being a nice person. I'm a strong believer in that. Yeah. And just, you never know who you're going to meet and just like be pleasant, be nice and do your best. Cause you also know, you never know who's watching and that also relates to the the title of our podcast. Book the room. <laughs> yeah, I love it. No, but it, exactly. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't look, it doesn't, uh, you'll feel better by being cheerful and you'll make people feel better around you. And again, yeah. I'm, I'm always, this to me is, is a contradictory thought only because I have, uh, I believe in being cheerful, but I also don't believe in being phony. Like if you're having a no. bad day, you're allowed to have a bad day, but you don't necessarily have to be mean to everybody around you. You can, you know, do what you need to get that, those expect, accept the feelings, feel the feelings, let them go through you and then move on. And however you deal with that, sometimes it's calling a friend, sometimes, you know, whatever, make sure you acknowledge it, deal with it. But being cheerful, being kind, being generous with your spirit will only enhance your life. It'll enhance other people's life and it will enhance your life. I a thousand percent agree with that. Yeah. And it yeah. brings you luck. So and that it was, does. Yeah. The, you get more opportunities for sure. Yeah. Like the, like our podcast says book the room. So when you come in, if it's an in-person callback and the director's here, the writer's here, you may not book that part but you could book the room. You might, you know, you are, you may not think so, but you can inspire directors. You can inspire writers with your choices. You know, scripts have been changed. Roles have been altered. Other projects have been developed from directors seeing different auditions. Yeah. So go in with that power. Yeah. That maybe it's not right for this role, but Casting is always thinking, directors are always thinking, whoever else, producers, our minds are always going. So if it's not right for this, you still have to put your best foot forward because we're thinking of the next things that could be, and you want to make good impressions. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a, a, something to always remember. And I did, I, I, I've told the students this too, is I, when I was in acting class, uh, many years ago, Jacqueline McClintock's uh, acting class, I had uh, 10 years, 15 years later, I was uh, one of the students that turned into a copywriter. And I ended up getting this like voice gig for Avon Canada that went on for three years. Wow. And it was because of the acting class I took 15 years prior to, you know, and I wasn't thinking I have to be cheerful. I was just being me doing my work. You don't know, surround yourself, like-minded people, be kind, be generous, be happy for people. Dawn yes. Ford, who's a, an actor in the city, and she had taught me this. Uh, she's not, ever, well, she's, I don't think she is. She's, I'll speak for her. She's never jealous <laughs> of her other fellow actors. When they do well, she celebrates with them and says, I'll have some of that. And I loved that. And I tell the students that all the time, I'll have some of that because yes. keep that energy. And I'll have some of that is to be clear, not I'm going to take your part away from you. So give me a part. It's to say, hi universe. I love that energy. I'm in a celebratory energy. I am vibrational and truly meaning it. And yeah. it takes away all the kind of like, why not me? I'll have some of that. That sounds like fun. I'll have some of that. And I love it. So, so yeah. I'll have some of that. <laughs> exactly. It's Anytime showing you what's possible. Possibility. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's amazing. Excellent, Jess. Well, this has yeah. been very informative and fun. So um, fun. Cool. So um, I think we'll wrap up today's episode. We have lots of upcoming episodes to look forward to where we're going to bring in lots of guests every week and they're going to be um, sharing their knowledge and talents with us. And we'll wrap it up with today's takeaways. So for today's takeaways, today's takeaways are always put your best foot forward, stop the victim mentality, and get ready for upcoming episodes where we'll talk to agents, veteran actors who have built successful careers in Montreal, 
actors who have created their own work to further their career. And we'll continue talking about mindset, inspiration, as well as practical tips to enjoy the journey. So thanks, everybody. And we'll see you Thank next time. Thank you.